What's the good word, y'all? DKB here. We will be playing Josh Allen in the Buffalo Bills this Sunday at home, looking to secure hopefully another victory to head into the bye week, which will put us on an extremely high note with the Buffalo Bills, um, according to whoever you speak to, essentially being the number one or number two uh, top team in the NFL. And uh, Josh Allen actually offered some words of uh, encouragement as well as kind of his pers uh, perspective having very similar experiences on what Zach Wilson's going through and a lot of the criticism that he's facing in the midst of this uh, loss to the, the Patriots that we just had and it was directly impacted by him. The three turnovers were just way too much. The defense held the, the Patriots offense in check the entire time, even with Ramondre Stevenson being the one, uh, you know, uh, kind of impactful bright star for the Patriots. And to be honest, there's probably nobody better to reflect in and in part, you know, some words of wisdom as well as their perspective than Josh Allen. Because to be honest, there's a lot of parallels on what's been happening year one and year two for both of these quarterbacks. Uh, but more specifically for year one, since it's slightly different, Josh Allen's been the more durable quarterback. Uh, so you don't really have the, the the layoff periods and the recovery time frames that we're seeing. It's essentially been consistent progress and development for Josh Allen. But uh, when we take a look at things, I mean, for starters, in the, the weekly podcast slash talk show that he was on, he essentially mentioned that, uh, you know, he understands where Zach Wilson's coming from. He's trying to make a play happen for his team, uh, although that leads to pressing, and that's where the turnovers and mistakes are coming from. However, he also mentioned it just takes a little bit more time for things to click uh, for quarterbacks. It's the most difficult position, arguably, in the NFL for players to uh, adjust and become accustomed to. Also... Again, there's a lot of parallels between what Zach Wilson is facing and what Josh Allen has gone through. I mean, when we go back, you know, Josh Allen entered the league in 2018. Zach Wilson just got drafted uh, last year, essentially, and then played his uh, first full year recently. But either way, 2021 was his entrance into the league. And so when we take a, just a look at the starting weaponry that both quarterbacks had to uh, start their careers with, Zach Wilson, Braxton Berrios, Elijah Moore, Jeff Smith, uh, Jamison Crowder, Corey Davis, Keelan Cole, uh, Ryan Griffin, Tyler Croft, at least in terms of his passing weaponry. Uh, we also know he had Michael Carter, he had Ty Johnson uh, to kind of round things out. But essentially, there's not a proven name uh, that that would scare anybody in the league. And I think we've seen a lot of that impact. Uh, but it was very much the same thing for Josh Allen. When he entered the league in 2018, he's looking at Ray Ray McLeod, Zay Jones, Robert Foster, Kelvin Benjamin, Charles Clay, Andre Holmes, Deontay Thompson, and then we all remember Jeremy Curley as um, his main go-to guys. And so, you know, taking a look at those rosters, the biggest threats on each team most likely would have been Elijah Morris, the highly drafted rookie, or Corey Davis as the big free agent signing, um, or for the Buffalo Bills, in their case, Kelvin Benjamin, which would have been the reclamation project. Um, they were hoping to turn around as that big body, um, you know, huge catch radius receiver for Josh Allen, who is known to have inaccuracy issues coming out of college, um, or maybe an Andre Holmes or Charles Clay. Um, uh, but that essentially didn't end up being the case. And we've seen these roster overhauls, um, that kind of ended up happening over the next off season to help facilitate that development and put them in much better places. But when we take a look at year one, uh, Zach Wilson was able to play 13 games. He ended up with a 310 record. Uh, Josh Allen, he plays 11 games. He goes five and six. Technically, he played 12. He only actually started 11. Um, but two very different stories. Zach Wilson ends his year with a 28.2 QBR. Josh Allen ends his uh, year one with a 49.8 QBR. Pretty stark difference, not anywhere near acceptable or great for either quarterback, but it lets you know how wide the gap was initially, even though the stats look extremely familiar, so uh, or similar, I should mean anyways. 383 attempts in year one for Zach Wilson. Um, in Josh Allen's case, 320 attempts. Josh Allen gets 2,074 yards, 10 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. Zach Wilson goes for 2,334 yards, 9 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. Zach Wilson ends up getting pummeled 44 times. Josh Allen was able to do a much better job. Only 28 sacks for him. Um, but then when you go deeper, Josh Allen has a 52.8% completion percentage. Zach Wilson has a 55.6% completion percentage. 
it is eerily similar, how, you know, how all the numbers look, but there was a stark difference in how they were implemented. So when you look at Josh Allen, his go to was the fact that he can lean on his rushing ability as well. Big body guy. He's a bit essentially a linebacker playing quarterback. Zach Wilson isn't built the same way. So when you see Zach Wilson rush 29 times in year one, 185 yards for touchdowns, we were all very excited about that. But Josh Allen, he does 89 rushes, 631 yards, eight touchdowns. He was essentially the main quarterback and the main uh, running back on his team all in one. So you've seen the aspects of what would make him great, whereas Zach Wilson isn't leaning on that ability as much. And you don't have to utilize him in the same way. Josh Allen can kind of be a, a I don't want to even put him in that vein, but almost like a, a Derrick Henry light um, and go out there and use himself as somewhat of a battering ram. And he's been very durable. Hasn't been much of a problem, although you don't want to put your quarterback through that. Zach Wilson doesn't have that same opportunity, but we've seen plenty of games where there is green in front of him and he ends up still trying to scramble and buy some time to make a play happen, uh, whereas he can maybe easily pick up a first down, get himself in a better short and distance situation, and uh, we haven't seen that taken advantage of as much. Um, but one of the huge things that stuck out to me was that uh, Zach Wilson got an opportunity to kind of develop his passing ability a little bit more with the 383 attempts whereas Josh Allen linked again more on his running game uh, but you see that that might not necessarily have been the most effective thing I mean again I think even this year in year two for Zach Wilson a lot of us will scream to see him take advantage of some more of that that grass that's in front of him but we see Zach Wilson fumble five times uh Josh Allen fumbled eight, of course, but he also rushed you know, essentially 60 more times than uh, Zach Wilson did. Also, there were 87 bad throws by Zach Wilson. His team also dropped 25 balls. Um, for Josh Allen, it was 78 bad throws and 18 drops. So even with the completion percentage being lower um, and even with the, the less attempts that he actually threw in that year, you don't see him nearly have as many inaccurate balls, as many, you know, miscommunication issues, uh, et cetera. And at least on our side, Michael Floor has uh, kind of, you know, put the onus on himself when it comes to either simplifying the offense or making some of what he called the efficient plays, which would be our short, um, short passing attack, our RPO um, options that we throw out there more effective. Uh, but I did find it very interesting. So it's definitely a tale of, two different style quarterbacks um, and I think the QBR and ultimately kind of just what we ran through here lets you know but we have seen all the famous stats for Zach Wilson so far at least in terms of what we should look to in terms of him potentially turning his career around looking like the number two pick in the first round in 2021 that we drafted him to be um, and it's a very similar times I thought this was going to be actually very much so different the average time that they had in the pocket, uh, 2.4 seconds for Zach Wilson, 2.5 seconds for Josh Allen. So, I mean, across the board, the decision making by Josh Allen compared to Zach Wilson was very different. Keep in mind, though, when you go back to the college ranks, Josh Allen was able to go out there and play a lot more games than Zach Wilson uh, in order to kind of work through uh, a lot of his kinks, at least at that point. Again, Josh Allen was drafted a lot, though, for this these physical traits that he's bringing, much like Zach Wilson. But he also at least had the game experience to kind of help, you know, make that an easier transition for himself uh Zach Wilson nowhere near as close he has the breakout year three uh season and then everything before that was a mix of some mixed results uh and you know injury luck that just didn't happen to swing his way so what exactly can we look forward to when it comes to Zach Wilson I mean ideally we would love for him to take the Josh Allen career arc Keep in mind in his second year, and you mentioned this in his podcast uh, talk show that he went on as well, uh, things didn't necessarily click until he played that Patriots game. He also had a very porous performance. Um, I believe he threw, I want to say it was four picks, might have been three, uh, but he also cost his team the game. The Bills did a phenomenal job holding the Patriots uh, to what I believe was only 16 points uh, and ultimately a very bad game from Tom Brady. Josh Allen cost his team the game, and while he didn't light the world on fire after that, uh, you could definitely see the decision-making and uh, him being intentional where he was going and kind of understanding the defenses and stuff uh, definitely went a lot further. So 
ultimately, if we want to rely on Josh Allen's advice, I think the real key to victory here is we've received, uh, and in Zach Wilson's case, much better pieces, much quicker than what Josh Allen was able to obtain. Um, but simply let your playmakers do their job uh, and get the ball in their hands as quick as possible, which our offense is built around yards after catch uh, with this West Coast offense. It's the same thing a lot of people have been saying. And we've seen it. Once Garrett Wilson gets the ball in his hand, we've seen how slippery he is. Elijah Moore in his own right, you know, there's a lot of drama going on there, but he's still also the guy that was leading the league. Uh, and I want to say it was like weeks 10 through 16, maybe. Um, or 10 through 14 uh, in his first year where he was blowing stats uh, left and right out of the, uh, you know, uh, on a weekly basis for himself. And so if we can see an excellent game out of Zach Wilson against Josh Allen and his Buffalo Bills defense, which also, by the way, if I remember correctly um, from the recent video I put out, I think they're ranked fourth overall uh, in terms of DVOA statistics, um, so quality top five defense, this will go a lot of way into quelling concerns. Uh, if This could be the turning point of his career as well, coming off that terrible Patriots game where we see kind of that mental shift in him understanding, I don't need to force the issue. Yes, some of these exceptional plays, as Zach Wilson's mentioned in his press conference, that maybe defenders may can't be helped. But if we can completely eliminate uh, and absolutely reduce a lot of these, uh, you know, mistakes that are unquestionably confusing to everyone, uh, we'll see Zach Wilson in a much better place. So, I guess my question to you all will be, where do we stand on Zach Wilson actually still being our franchise quarterback? Again, only 18 games into a season, even in uh, um, Josh Allen's second year, he still at least had, uh, I want to say, hold on, because I can actually find that right now. Uh, by the time his second season was over, Josh Allen had played a combined 27 games as a starter uh, so a much more significant sample size obviously there's still a lot of things the coaching staff love to build around him having that rushing ability as well played a huge part our path is going to be slightly different but uh the pieces are in place Garrett Wilson looks like a wide receiver one for us uh once that chemistry and Zach Wilson figures himself out he's going to absolutely explode Elijah Moore can still turn things around at any given point uh we still have a, a huge freaking Denzel Mims is out there Corey Davis is a big play threat at any given time once Brees Hall returns and we get AVT. And so you can see what looks like a very bright picture for Zach Wilson. It's really what I would honestly, in my opinion, I would say this is the last major huge piece we need to figure out. Our defense is built for the future and right now. Our offense is built for right now in the future based on the record that we have. Uh, and so it's really ultimately going to come down to LaFleur. It's going to come down to Calabrese and ultimately to Zach Wilson, who has to, you know, make the performances happen on the field uh, to turn this thing around. So personally, he still has uh, my full belief um, that he can make it happen until we get to the end of the season. And uh, we continue to see things happen, especially after this bye week where he's proven to be better after having time off. Um, I won't be too, too concerned. So let me know what your guys' thoughts are and I'll catch you again. Peace.